That's Jim Heller show featuring Baylor University's basketball coach. And we'll tell you right now that we'll be here until 7.05, at which time we'll be switching you to the Bahia Hotel at uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, headquarters of the Dallas Cowboys for the Aztec SRAM program. That'll go up until about 10 minutes until 8. Then we'll have the uh, broadcast of the MCC Cook County basketball game from over at the Highlands Gym, preceded by Coach Johnny Carter's pregame show. Okay, that's the billboard. With us tonight is Jim Haller, as always, and uh, we'll tell you that our telephone number is 776-1330. And if you have a question that you want to ask of Coach Haller, I think uh, before our last program was after the Texas A&M game or before the A&M before the A&M game. So perhaps your questions would revolve around the uh, Texas A&M game and the Texas Tech game, and of course tomorrow night's game with the University of Houston, or perhaps about some of the uh, so-called upsets in the Southwest Conference thus far. In any event. If you have a question, if you want Coach Jim Howler to answer it for you, call him at 776-1330. We'll record the question, pass it along to him. Jimmy you had your uh, weekly press conference today, and one of the things that I noticed that was different was you had uh, the first uh, lady I've seen in one of your press conferences. Yes, the new sports editor for the Baylor Lariat was there, and she's very confident, confident and uh, I'm sure Nancy will do a good job, and we'll be looking forward to having her covering it the rest of the season. You know, uh, you expressed a little bit of concern today at your press conference, uh, the fact that uh, despite the fact that school has just started again, that the, the students, it sort of takes them a little time to get back into the swing of things and know that you're playing tomorrow night and be aware of the fact that you do have a game. Well, we depend a whole lot on the Lariat, uh, the Baylor School newspaper, to get the word to our student body. And, you know, it would be nice to think that all of them listen to KWTX, but uh, in case they don't, um, worried about uh, all of them being aware that we do play the Houston Cougars tomorrow night and there's nothing that myself or the players would like to see more than a big crowd out there because uh, both of the last two contests we played on the road at Texas A&M and at Texas Tech had huge loud crowds and I know it helped those ball clubs against us and I hope we have a big one to help us against the Cougars tomorrow night and then again Saturday it would be very important because we play SMU on TV and we need all the people in the stands we can to, to have a good showing on television. I want to ask you to comment on one other thing before we go to our recorded questions. You mentioned today at your press conference about Benny Johnson uh, being more excited in the workouts the last couple of days, and you've seen him in a long time, primarily because of the play of your inside people. Well, Frank, there's no doubt that our inside uh, front line, consisting of Wendell Mays, Marty Zeller, and Terry Tingle, are playing better than I really thought all three of them could possibly play and uh, that's got Benny really excited because he knows if our inside play keeps improving, it's going to make... After SMU beat Texas A&M, don't you think that, that you should have played the Aggies a lot closer than you did? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I saw that SMU-Texas A&M game, and I'll assure you that we played Texas A&M very well. It was just a one-point game with uh, six minutes to go. It was 58-57, and... Uh, obviously you didn't see the contest because we played hard and we played well and uh, we were playing that night without Benny Johnson and uh, I, I couldn't say enough for my players about that game and I, I think you have just obviously seen the score and made judgment about the game from that but uh, uh, I was proud of our players and I congratulate SMU for playing well and, and defeating A&M but uh, gosh uh, I couldn't have been happier with our performance at the college station except for getting a victory out of it. And the uh, big difference, too, uh, Jim, that one game was played at SMU and the other one at college station. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize all these things, but uh, nevertheless, uh, I hope you understand my response. <laughs> uh, you said today something about, the, you know, since you did watch the SMU A&M game, about the way A&M attacked the SMU zone. Uh, they didn't get the ball inside a whole lot, did they? Well, Rudy Woods got 23 points and played super, but really A&M didn't get the performance out of their other two inside people, Vernon Smith and Ren Wright, like uh, they did against us. And uh, They really, I didn't think, was as patient attacking SMU as they were attacking our ball club. Uh, they just didn't seem to play as hard to me. You know, I'm not anyone to pass judgment on another ball club, but it didn't look like they were quite as stirred up. And SMU's beaten Texas A&M eight out of the last nine years in Dallas, so uh, maybe there's some psychology involved there. Coach, how about the crowds? Golly, there have been some great ones. 10,000 out at Lubbock last week, uh, 9,500 there Saturday night. I believe you saw over 10,000 at SMU Saturday night with A&M. Well, that's correct. And I know our game at Texas Tech was the biggest crowd they've had in the Lubbock Coliseum since Coach Myers has been there, something like seven years. 
And then Saturday night for the SMU A&M game, that was the largest crowd in Moody Coliseum history. They had 10,276.